from its enormous doors, bigger and heavier than some cars I've owned, to its great Zoftig rump. The Continental GT exists for one reason, to transport just two people in a manner that says the one on the left has arrived. Let's drive this 2012 version with the W12 motor and check the tech. Everywhere you look, the Continental prints like it's a 150% scale model of a regular car. And the details I love include this window opening when all the glass is down and you go pillarless, and these utterly flush, understated taillights. Now inside this Bentley, we happen to be awash in piano black and stern black leather finishes with their signature diamond quilt. But this is a bespoke car. You can order this thing any way you can imagine. We're not going to go there. Let's go tech. Finally, Bentley's got a new, more modern head unit. And let me get on my soapbox for a minute. I think a lot of the manufacturers of these extremely expensive cars figure, well, we're going to bowl them over with the interior, the performance, the styling. But the folks who buy these cars are the same ones who buy the new iPhone, the new iPad, every iMac, a Sonos music system. They are technology elites. You can't be throwing anything but the best tech in front of them. With that in mind, this is a very good VW-derived piece. Volkswagen owns Bentley. Little quirks, though. You can have either 2D, 3D, topo, or traffic. You can't have traffic on 3D, for example, or traffic on topo. But beyond that, the quality of it is good, especially when you're zoomed into a certain level. It's a hard drive-based system. Now here are our media choices. AM, FM, and HD radio are standard on this guy. Satellite radio, of course. Under the media tab, we get the more interesting stuff. Optical disc here, optional with a package, brings us a six disc in the glove box as well. You also spotted that MDI controller. That's a multi-device interface. We happen to have a pigtail on there for an iOS device. We've also got an SD card slot right here for the four of you who do that. You've got a SIM card slot so you can have a phone SIM in the car. And look at this. Welcome to the 80s. This is called the privacy phone. For your passengers to use, they can call and do a booty call while you're driving and you don't know it because they're speaking in code. Heated and cooled seats with a special feature when they're on high cooling, they are the loudest seats I've ever heard. I got in this car and they were on cooling three and I thought I was dragging something behind me. That's a hell of a noise, you hear that? The shock absorber button brings you this screen to set up your suspension. Four settings from comfort to sport. Needless but fun stuff like this, you can play with the wing, raise it up and down, and not just leave it to its own devices. That gets old after about a week. We have the Name Audio System, N-A-I-M. It's an English boutique audio manufacturer, and that gets us 11 speakers driven by 16 channels. I'm not quite sure how that works, but anyway, it's in there. And they use these special drivers, speakers, that are flat, which they say disperses audio much more naturally and evenly. All I can tell you is this, like so many high dollar systems, and this one costs like seven grand optionally, it makes CDs sound tremendous, satellite radio, ghastly. In back is the county jail. You'll put someone back there unless they've been real bad, drinking, fighting, cussing. Behind that is one of the biggest trunks in automaking. It goes on for yards. One choice only on the gearbox in this guy, six speed automatic, drop back for sport mode, over into this gate for shifting mode. You have column mounted paddles. I normally love these because I like my paddles to be in the same place. However, I drive down here, not up here, because I did driver training a couple decades ago, but there's nothing to reach for shifting. I want some little ears that come down. Now the engine is quite a thing in the Bentley Continental GT. It's a W12, that's a Volkswagen thing. It's sort of like a V8 with an extra bank of cylinders nested in there. It's a brute. We're talking about 567 horsepower, 516 foot-pounds of torque, thanks to that. Twin turbos, like 12 cylinders wasn't enough. Zero to 60 is 4.4 seconds. That's impressive enough, but add in this fact. This car weighs 5,100 pounds. The last van that moved you weighed less than that. The MPG is the downside. 1219 when your grandma's driving. Probably single digits when you're driving. Or try the new engine option in this car, the 4-liter direct injection twin-turbo V8. It uses cylinder deactivation, direct injection, and an 8-speed automatic to get you much better MPG, 1524. 
while delivering 500 horsepower, 487 foot-pounds of torque, and 0 to 60 a tick slower at 4.6. Now, driving the Continental GT is like going to dinner with Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. In drive, everyday driving, going back and forth to work or whatever, it's kind of a bore. It's a big old barge of a thing and feels all 5,115 of its pounds. But then put it in sport mode, or better yet, shift it yourself. Dial in that suspension to a sporting setting and stand on it, and this car pulls a Jenny Craig. I swear to God, it loses 2,000 pounds, and it turns in really nicely because, I think I forgot to mention, it's all-wheel drive. One thing it doesn't do is get rid of its body weight. This car has a lot of body roll, but luckily it's got a lot of tire as well, and a lot of power to get all four paws crawling you out of trouble. Now the kind of power this car delivers, and if you really stand on it, it's unbelievable, is not the most responsive kind of power. It's big displacement, although it is a 12, that means that the cylinders are a little more responsive than if they were large in an eight. But there is some turbo lag in there, and generally speaking, some thinking lag as all those sensors and processors figure out if they really want to do what you just asked them to. It's amazing that you can throw a car this big and this heavy through turns this hard and come out with a shiny side up. But you're never going to mistake it for a sports car. Okay, let's price the Continental GT, because I know you, like me, have got 200 grand laying around to go spend on a car. That's what it costs, about 195 something base, but 3,000 of that is gas guzzler tax. 2,600 is destination charge. Now the options, it'll take you CNET style. The name audio system is about seven grand. I'm already skeptical, but I'm definitely gonna skip that option on the check sheet because I'm not gonna hear it when the seat coolers are on. Then there's the $4,100 convenience package. Now we're talking. That's going to get you adaptive cruise control, that kind of cool little privacy handset phone thing, and the valet key. 